I have here three Roman silver coins. The first is a denarius of the Emperor Nero, minted between AD 60 and 61. The second is a denarius of the Emperor Antoninus Pius, minted between AD 153 and 154. And the third is a denarius of the Emperor Caracalla, minted between AD 196 and 197. You wouldn't know it by looking at them, but the three coins are actually made of quite different silver alloys. The denarius of Nero is essentially pure silver, whereas the denarius of Antoninus Pius is about 80% silver, so there's about 20% copper in this coin. And finally, the denarius of Caracalla is about 46% silver, so in fact the majority of this coin is actually composed of copper. So, how can the coins be made of different alloys and yet all appear to be made of fine silver? Well, the Roman mint had a tried and tested technique for disguising the quality of its silver alloys. This technique would have been well known to silversmiths, and in fact it's still in use today. The process is sometimes called surface enrichment of silver. But that implies that something is deliberately added to the surface of the coin to make it look more silvery, whereas in fact the process involves taking something away. A better term for this process would be depletion silvering. In this process, a coin blank is cast from a strictly controlled alloy of silver and copper. Let's say it's made of one-third copper and two-thirds silver, one of the recipes we actually find in use for producing Roman silver coins. In section, the blank doesn't look silvery at all at this stage. Instead, it has a distinct coppery hue all the way through. You can see the coppery interior of this Roman silver coin, even though it has silvery surfaces. The Roman state artificially enhanced the, the uh, silvery appearance of the coinage by a heat treatment process which oxidised the copper portion of the alloy, making it possible to remove the copper as a salt by the application of a dilute citric acid or vinegar. So the coppery looking blank was heated and then immersed in an acidic solution. Pliny the Elder recommended using a solution of men's urine on an iron shovel at white heat. A medieval recipe also recommended urine mixed together with rock alum, tartar and salt. Whatever the solution used, it stripped out the copper from the surface and penetrated some way into the blank, leaving a silver rich layer. This layer was of irregular depth depending on how long the blank had been heated for, the strength and heat of the solution, and the physical properties of the individual blank. This stripped out the copper salts formed by the oxidation process, leaving behind a honeycomb of virtually pure silver. This honeycomb, or crunchy bar structure, could then be consolidated by the striking process. Using a microscope, we can see the effects of this depletion process on a section cut through a Roman imperial silver denarius. The bottom edge marks the surface of the coin. Behind that is the enriched zone, which appears as a matrix of silver with dark voids where the copper has been leached out. In this case, the zone is about a tenth of a millimetre thick. Behind that, we start to see the presence of copper. And finally, we reach the heart metal of the interior, where the copper survives intact. The next stage in the process involved striking the coin. The blank was struck between two dies to make the coin. This had the effect of compressing the silver enriched layer. Producing a coin of relatively base composition, uh, but one that looked as if it were made of pure silver. The process was highly effective. Pliny the Elder noted that it was difficult to tell by simple testing whether objects treated in this way were made of pure silver or not. But that generally isn't the end of the story. The coins ended up buried in the ground, where they were usually subjected to further corrosion from their burial environment. This depleted their copper content still further. When silver coins are excavated from the ground, 
it's common to clean them with an acidic solution, which has the effect of stripping out the copper yet again. The end result is usually a coin which has an irregular but quite deep silver-enriched layer, formed by the leaching of copper from the original alloy. So the outer layers of the coin have had the silver content artificially stripped out, which has the effect of raising the global silver content of the coin. So how do we determine the silver contents of such coins? The question is not a trivial one. Historians have taken the quality of Roman silver coinage as a comment on the economic health of the Roman Empire. One technique for analysing coins, favoured in the 1960s and 1970s, was called X-ray fluorescence. This technique measures the intensity of the X-ray spectra associated with particular elements such as silver. The method involves scraping away at the edge of the coin and irradiating the sample area with X-rays to obtain a reading, in this case, for silver. To overcome the effects of surface enrichment, the edge of the coin is repeatedly scraped and tested. When three repeatable readings are obtained, it is considered that the enriched surface layer has been fully penetrated and that we are in the heart metal, which is representative of the original alloy. But as we can see from this diagram, often the heart metal has not been penetrated. The only way to ensure that you've penetrated the heart metal of the coin is to abrade much more thoroughly, or to cut the coin in half, which will give a much more accurate reading, but do intolerable damage to the coin. So how to sample the heart metal of a coin like this without destroying it? There is no way of reaching the heart metal without doing some damage. The question is how to minimise it. One way is to take a sample using a very small drill of about half a millimetre in diameter and drilling into the cylindrical edge of the coin. The first millimetre or so of turnings are then discarded to avoid the enriched layer. Then the sample is taken from deep within the coin, where the effects of copper depletion are at their least. The drillings are then removed for analysis. The samples are dissolved in acid and analysed using two methods. Atomic absorption spectrometry for the main elements, silver and copper, and inductively coupled plasma emission spectrometry for minor and trace elements like gold, bismuth and lead. Thanks to these techniques, we now have a robust set of results for the chemical composition of Roman silver coinage, which doesn't depend on unreliable surface analyses. The Roman mint is finally beginning to yield its secrets.